Uh, first and foremost, I focus on measuring online video and distributed content. Um, but I'm also leading a lot of the work that we're doing in exploring cross-media measurement um, and understanding what the differences are of kind of composing your media mix across platforms and how, you know, how there are multiplier effects, what the, what the benefits are of, of incorporating video and social media and the web as well as, as, well as more traditional formats. Um, and I think probably the main thing that excites me about social media um, and online video specifically is how we can get better at expressing it um, in terms that will really encourage the shift of digital dollars online um, and get people much more confident with the kinds of benefits and the kinds of behaviours which we can expect when we incorporate social media marketing. That's great. And you mentioned cross-media measurement. I mean, if you listen to Doug at Del Monte or Mark at, at Racket, a lot of what they talked about is how do we take the digital metrics and map them back to the metrics that their CMO cares about, their brand manager cares about. And that's clearly, you know, expressing my own uh, point of view would be we need to get better at mapping our metrics to what counts. I think, Jonathan, kind of start with you. I mean, Nielsen's been around a long time, as is Buzz, Buzz Metrics as part of this. Um, how should we think about tying the metrics that are still evolving into the digital sphere and social marketing in particular back to the metrics like favorability, purchase intent, awareness, sales? Yeah, so, um, you know, if you think about kind of the traditional media research models in a, in a broadcast world, um, you know, it's, it's based on a sense of reach, uh, you know, the number of people that you're, that you're reaching, the, the number of times that you're um, reaching e each of those. So it's this Im impression-based model. And I think um, within the social media space, we, we do, you're right, we do have to play there. Right? We need to be able to um, do some, some basic counting um, uh, so that there's uh, some level of connection uh, be between these programs and, and um, what a, a CMO or brand manager is looking at for uh, more traditional marketing programs. And, and I think there is um, a lot of progress on this front. So you know, the, the, all of us up on this panel talk about you know, some various ways that we're doing that, and I'm sure uh, most people in the audience have, have methods for that as well. Um, and, and I think in general, we're, um, you know, we're starting to crack that and definitely the initiative that the IAB is doing uh, to do that in a way that's uh, uh, somewhat standardized in a framework is, is critically important so that we're not all uh, uh, talking in, in different language when we go out and espouse our, our various techniques. But um, I, actually, I actually think it is critical that from the beginning we also um, rise beyond that because the, um, the ramifications of what's happening in social media uh, are pretty dramatic to that broadcast model. And if all that we manage to do uh, is start to, uh, is successfully count impressions so that we can match a social media campaign to uh, a television advertising campaign, we'll, we'll miss out on, on the whole opportunity. And you know, the reason that uh, every major CMO, VP of marketing, um, uh, is obsessed with social media right now. The reason you guys are all here and IAB is able to pack the house, uh, you know, in a, a tough conference uh, environment, is because there is something much, uh, much more important happening. And the richness of value that comes from an impression when the uh, user or the audience is actually involved in either the creation or the distribution of that content uh, brings a, a whole new dimension. And, and I think as we, you know, as we uh, follow some of the traditional guidelines and rules, we have to not lose sight of um, measuring that richness as well. And that's, um, that's tough and that is gonna take some, um, um, some new metrics. But you know, I would say Nielsen is definitely betting very aggressively on this. We're, we're betting on it for the online space, but we, we see it for uh, video content as well for, for the, you know, the television market as well. We think this will be, the social model will be the model for the future and that's what we need to build around. And um, you know, we, we definitely, there, there's a couple different aspects of that. Um, uh, you know, incorporating the buzz metrics business into the Nielsen business was designed to uh, bring a greater degree of understanding about the content or the dynamics uh, uh, of how that information is passed around from one 
a user to another, and the idea of bringing that in-house and then combining it with the net ratings audience measurements uh, was, was geared towards uh, getting at that richness. But probably the biggest thing of it is what we're really talking about is we've got to be able to measure the, the difference in value that comes from these one, of, one of these more engaged impressions. And so we're working to uh, tie those, that impression data or that engagement data to actual sales data. And um, there's, a, you know, there's lots of different ways to, to work at cracking that nut. Um, what we've been doing is either media, metering or cooking uh, the individuals who we track their household purchase uh, information for um, so we can actually tie that uh, online behavior uh, or the social media behavior with their uh, offline purchase uh, information. And, and you know, we think that's, that, that type of connection, making that, uh, that impact uh, measurement is what's going to be necessary to uh, help publishers or social ne uh, social networks properly uh, value their um, uh, value their properties, value their audiences, and value what's taking place within their uh, their networks. That's a great point, Liza. Segueing there, I mean, how should we think about weighting these different actions? Whether it's passing along a, a widget to the friend or installing it. I mean, how should a marketer think about what what value to assign to different actions? Um, well, there's really you know, two ways I like to think about this. The first is that the, the reason we all get excited about uh, the idea of, of conversational marketing uh, is because the idea that if you receive something from a friend, you discover something through a friend, that that's going to have a larger impact on you. And early research is, is certainly showing that to be the case. That's going to have a bigger impact and influence uh, on you than something you find from a marketer. Um, so when we're looking at how to weight actions, right, it's about the delivery mechanism. It's, you know, what are the things that you're receiving from a friend? Uh, on the flip side of that is the creative strategy. So, you know, it's really not any different to uh, a brand website experience you create or banner creative uh, that's developed. There has to be a creative strategy behind it that says this type of action or this type of experience is going to help drive awareness and, and drive the type of engagement that we think is going to move the, the needle on uh, awareness and attitude. And those same things need to apply to the experiences that are developed uh, uh, in the social space. Now that may be, you know, if you're a movie company, it may still be trailer views that's the important metric. Um, uh, for a CPG company, it may be a coupon that you're trying to drive. There are, there are actions that you can determine, even if it's just customization of a particular activity, that are tied into the creative strategy. Um, and what that then needs to be married to is what's the delivery mechanism? Because there absolutely is a higher value to that experience being shared from one person to another than just being pushed out from a marketer. Um, and I think that, you know, as, as Jonathan started to speak, you know, the, the metrics aren't quite there yet or the tracking isn't quite there yet to be able to put an exact value uh, on those different pieces. Um, but there is definitely the ability to set a stake in the ground in terms of what actions are really going to be meaningful for your particular campaign and to drive that awareness. Um, and then to start building on that you know, as, as we're able to, to run brand awareness studies across the board as recruitment becomes more possible across different platforms um, to really bring that home and make that happen. I think there was uh, some recent study, it may have been a, a combination of I think, Razorfish and IRI that showed that, yes, you know, something that's passed along to a friend, that second generation, uh, has a much bigger or greater influence on um, uh, uh, purchase intent uh, than just an initial uh, uh, exposure to a piece of content. So we all know the value is there. We can't quite quantify it yet, but we're moving in the right direction. Uh, and you know, I, I really encourage brands to put that stake in the ground to say, you know what, you know more than you think you do. The same actions that you're developing for your other online experiences are just as meaningful uh, in the social space. You just need to figure out how to make the adjustments to make them shareable.